uh, we have a great group of accomplished filmmakers here to discuss how they progress from their passion-driven solo projects uh, to more complex productions and higher budgets. Did it get any easier? How did you go from being, as, like, as you say, a playwright who had done uh, uh, productions in front of 90 people to kind of understanding the kind of the lay of the land? How did you figure out the way that you know that you know that LA worked? Was it just trial and error? Was there was there anything that was helpful for you in terms of figuring out how to you know how to navigate this? I think it was just trial and error at first, and and um, you know meeting a surprising number of nice people and then a surprising number of less nice people and and sort of um, you know trying as hard as possible to be in business with 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 the nice ones and you, you don't really get those options early on but I always try I, I came in with a plan at first I was like all right I'm gonna every producer I'm gonna meet I'm gonna know the projects they're working on, the things that have open directing assignments, and uh, and my goal is to get a second meeting with them at the end of that. After like 10 of those, it was it, it, it was just impossible. I just could not. That's, that sounds like a perfectly reasonable plan, but was it just too many to <laughs> possibly keep up? Or it, it was, and it was just like emotionally exhausting to try to do that. So I got this really extraordinarily um, lucky break when a nonprofit film studio in Seattle very short-lived and no longer around, unfortunately, um, basically commissioned me to make my first feature, write and direct a first feature film, and you know, said, we'll take care of the crew, we'll take care of the money, would you like to do this? And I was like, twisted my arm. It was, it was insane. Um, and so I made, that was really my sort of film crew, film school, like, oh, this is how, you know, I was going around introducing myself to everybody, and oh, Ryan, your name's Ryan, what, what do you do? I'm the gaffer, what the hell is a gaffer? Like, I really was like, I, it was all new to me, so I was soaking up a lot that, that year. Honestly, like, our progression was just all about trying desperately to make something that didn't suck, and then by the time we made our third, third short film, and, you know, they were doing well, they won awards at major festivals, et cetera, people started saying, like, literally, Sundance people started saying, when are you guys gonna make a feature? And since that turning point, we've really like just relied on uh, what we've created to create the open doors of what we will do next. Um, one of the best pieces of advice someone gave me was, uh, and I asked him, I was like, so how do you become a director? When do you know you're a director? And he's like, no one's gonna give you that label. Um, it's just, you are. You are what you do every day. If you're a writer, you write every day. If you're a director, you direct every day. It's just a part of who you are. And I think what ends up happening is you just decide, like, well, do I want to make, do I want to make something and it might be flawed and it might have problems or do I, am I just going to go home? And so um, I think at a certain point you, you, you bite the bullet one way or the other. Like you, you decide like, no, I'm going for it. The most important thing is just for you to tell your story. And I th it's interesting just listening to these guys talk. It reminds me of like the basic thing. And, and that is just, you just got to keep making movies and don't make meetings. Make movies, not meetings, you know? Yeah, I'd say definitely one way to go. I can't, I can't <laughs> recommend it enough is to get your friends together, grab a camera, and make a, a script that's actually, you know, doable and make, make work.